Hello everyone and welcome to Stock Sandbox Mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.4 and in this video I explore the largest single stage to orbit rocket that I've ever designed in stock. This is not it. This is fairly small by comparison. It's only 140 tons to orbit but it was sort of a warm-up act during the Twitch livestream where I did everything in and I this is actually the final attempt with this rocket which has a first stage that returns to the KSC and a second stage which is composed entirely out of SRBs. Now this had to turn flat before I ignited the SRBs, but unfortunately I missed stage, I was supposed to get rid of the fairing and ignited the SRBs instead. And so now we're going to have a very lopsided sort of situation, so it's not going to really get the payload to orbit and I, because I have to do this sort of tilt down thing and it doesn't have quite enough. But actually, it should have had more than enough Delta V. But anyway, I wanted to see if I could get the first stage back. I called it the Magnum Rocket because it was big and it seems like an appropriate name for a big thing. And you can see all of the vector engines that we're using on the first stage. And the question is, can I land it? So, aside from uh, visual mods, environmental visual enhancements, and stock visual enhancements, I've got MechJeb. And that's the those are the only mods that I have in here. There are no part mods. Uh, MechJeb is added via a module manager patch, not with uh, parts. So, well, can I land this? It has to land basically on the engine bells, even though it has tiny strut... But no, no, I made a mistake. I mean, it was my first landing attempt with it, ever, and it's pretty darn big. Yeah, that didn't work so well. But anyway, just a warm-up act. The main deal is not the Magnum rocket, but rather what I eventually called the Havoc rocket. And this is me getting the payload together. It's not gonna be 2,000 tons. It ends up being 1,400 tons. A mere 1,400 tons to orbit. And you can see the lower clusters of vector engines. I just went with vector engines. My goal was to make it quickly. Making large rockets is more complicated in stock than in realism overhaul because we don't have procedural parts or SSTU. But it can still be done relatively quickly as long as you use struts. And I didn't have struts on this yet. I was using auto strutting. Auto strutting was not good enough. As you can see. Uh, though very impressive fireworks display in a way. The single stage has 156 vector engines, there's 12 in the center, and then 6 uh, groups of 12, and then another 6 groups of 12, basically is how it's arrayed. And so there are 13 cores all together. And that's what happens when they all separate. This is an 11,000 ton rocket on the launch pad, more than 11,000 tons. But it didn't take very long to build it, I just slapped the cores together, had 12 engines on each core, and that was it. Uh, obviously I needed more struts, which I proceed to do here. The delicate strut work, lots and lots of struts. But it was more taxing on my computer than it was in terms of me designing in the VAB. It's gotta take a lot more time to launch this than it did to actually design it. And again, uh, going with my basic theory that big rockets are fairly easy to make. Well, here we go again. I guess this is sort of a, you know, physics rate test. You know, how good is your computer? 156 engines. And again, that's it. So, and we're making this an SSTO, so the goal is actually to bring it back. And it is a reusable launcher, in theory. Uh, that's uh, heavy on the theory. There are no landing struts big enough in stock to, you know, hold this up. So we're just relying on the engine bills when we land. And I don't know if these vector engines can actually support the rocket. I somewhat doubt it, but we're going to find out what happens anyway. As you can see, it was a tortuous climb. And this is all during a Twitch live stream. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, what I did there was I clicked uh, Orbit Prograde, I meant Surface Prograde. And so Smart ASS knocked us off our trajectory and I needed to pull us back up again. Fortunately the vector engines do, you know, vector. They have a lot of gimbal to them and so I was able to save it thanks to them. And it looks like our struts are really holding now. Obviously structural integrity is good. Lots of drag though. 
And we're not going that fast at this altitude, but it was fast enough to get the flame effects. Here we separate the fairings, and that caused a bit of a problem. So we haven't done the orbital burn yet, we were just coasting to Apoapsis, but I was trying to get rid of the fairings, and we had a structural failure. So, uh, we had to launch again, and I had better music for this. Of course, this is all during the live stream, so the music you hear is the music we were listening to, and it's mostly soundtracks from games. But that's why, uh, unfortunately, it skips around a bit. Looks like I don't have my mech chip windows, I would like those. I believe the part count was over 400, between 400 and 500 parts for this. And that's why it's a lot slower than the Realism Overhaul one, even though the Realism Overhaul one was actually larger. It had a much greater mass on the launch pad. This actually has more capability to orbit, of course, because it's Kerbin, and Kerbin doesn't take so much Delta V. It would be interesting to see the largest single stage to orbit Realism Overhaul rocket and then try and recover that. That would be quite special. Though I don't think it'd have much payload capacity, it would be quite large. <laughs> it would be quite large, especially since it'd have the Hydrolox tanks, probably. Okay, uh, we are ready to coast to Apoapsis. We do that, and we finish our orbital burn before separating off the fairing this time. Just to be safer, I wanted to separate off the fairing in space. And so we have made orbit, and let's see if the fairings destroy things again. I kept it to confetti fairings because I was pretty sure the clamshell fairing really would destroy things, because there are fairing bits underneath those uh, payload tanks. By the way, they're not full, uh, they're only partially filled in order to get the 1,400 ton payload capacity. And so we separate them off, and there you see the payload. Vessel mass is 1,400 tons, just verify that, we didn't drain any of those tanks unnecessarily. And so off it goes. And now we try to bring this back, but I realize I forgot a controller. I mean, I thought I had put a controller. I had put the SAS unit inside that service bay, but I thought I had a controller but didn't. So I had to launch a claw with a controller. And that is what this is. So we have to. We, we just use a swivel engine and an LV909 here. And soon enough, we have rendezvoused with our large stage. And we need to make sure that we claw it very close to the center of mass and orient it right, otherwise, it's going to be a pain to do the maneuvers to come back down again. So here I am lining up. And. Not too much help with this. Just gotta sort of eyeball it. And... Claw. Alright. So, now we can do the retro burn and everything. Power is not a problem. And I've shut down a bunch of the engines, but we still have plenty of engines to spare. You can see our vessel mass right now over 2,400 tons still. Those heavy tanks and... Pretty heavy engines, too. We also have substantial Delta V left, so if this was not going to be re reusable, it would be able to carry more payload than we did, maybe 1,500 tons or more, because that's 1,000 meters per second left. You can see the flame effects as we come back down, and with the flames hitting the 156 engine bells, the nozzles, uh, they're, they create quite a, quite a clone, though uh, lots of lag, too. Obviously, I turned that off in favor of having the heating display, and I decided that since we've already passed the KSC by a lot, I need to really slow down and make sure things don't blow up. And so we're using the Spitter Delta V we had. Eventually, we reach the Eastern Peninsula. We coast right over the KSC, and I try to make a landing at the Eastern Peninsula, so we're slowing down to ensure that, also to keep the overheating from blowing anything up, and I succeed at that, but the atmosphere is really not good at slowing something like this down. We're still so heavy, and I guess relatively little drag for our mass. We don't have much surface area. And finally, finally, we get to the lower parts of the atmosphere, and they slow us down a little bit better, but still going very fast at 4.5 kilometers. Still well past the speed of sound here. 
and I need to judiciously use my Delta V. But the frame rates are not good. The physics rate is not good. And it's really tough to maneuver this with any accuracy. And here I'm trying my best, but it is difficult. I thought about speeding the video up here, but decided against it so that you could appreciate this landing attempt in all of its laggy grandeur. And maybe to uh, see how your own system compares with it uh, if you decide to use it. I, I will link the craft file in the video description. It is a stock craft. Uh, well, you need a DLC though, because I'm using the 5 meter tanks from the DLC. Making history DLC is necessary. That's something else that made it easier to make this. This, of course, was not buildable in earlier versions of KSP. Uh, it was much more of a struggle to make large rockets in earlier versions than it is since the NASA update. Uh, that was 0.23.5, and then you know, that introduced the 3.75 meter parts. And then, of course, uh, the Making History update with the 5 meter parts really makes these large rockets easier, though doesn't really help with landing them. Though, gotta admit, we, uh, we did have a lot of engines that were recoverable. I mean, technically we could recover those, right? That's a lot of engines. In fact, an entire core is right there. So, well, you can see if you can do better. I don't know. Um, Possibly you could build a better rocket. I did just put this together very quickly, so it was haphazard and I knew vector engines all the way and all that. Oh, and our claw is still there, isn't it? Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.